Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. Great to have you here for me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. We're going to continue to watch that system in the Northeast wrap around snowfall. Yes, can snowfall continuing in many areas? Lake enhanced all the way up to synoptic snow here in the parts of northern New England and the Southeast Canada. And we're going to watch high pressure build in. We will be looking at the potential for a severe weather outbreak here mid to late week across parts of the Southern Plains and Deep South. And if that weren't enough, could we be looking at more East Coast storm action? GFS keeping things rainy and warm. However, however, the European model right around the 18th through the 21st of March has something different in mind here. Could we be looking at a East Coast snowstorm for much of the Mid-Atlantic into the Northeast? We'll take a look at how plausible this could be. Let's get into it. And as we take a look at the European model heading out towards the 20th, I'll answer the question how plausible it is. We could be looking at what the European model is showing right around the 20th of March, a major East Coast snowstorm. And what are we looking at right around March 19th, 20th time frame? Could this trough be indicative of a potential East Coast storm. We'll get into all the details and how much snow we could we be looking at here in the parts of the Northeast as we continue to get wrap around into Monday morning. I'll have all the details on snowfall totals additional here across the Northeast and parts of the Ohio Valley. Or for severe weather, we have two days this week we're going to be watching, Tuesday and Thursday. Here's Tuesday. This is Northeast Oklahoma, southwestern part of Missouri, and southeastern part of kansas this is tuesday damaging wind large hail maybe an isolated tornado and for a later thursday into thursday night we could be looking at a rare outlook here looking all the way out toward day five here we could be looking at major severe weather outbreak across northeast texas southeastern oklahoma southwestern part of arkansas and northwestern louisiana maybe a tornado outbreak all right so as we start our gfs and we'll transition to the european model because the European model is showing something very interesting around the 20th, 21st time frame, but the GFS has been warmer. So as that system pulls away up here into parts of the northeast, we get into uh, Monday morning, the 11th here. You can see that low still over southern New Brunswick, wraparound moisture, uh, rain east to the low, snow on the northwest. That starts to pull away, changing to snow here in Nova Scotia. We set up high pressure into parts of the east here. Now, as we go throughout the week, we're going to have a couple rounds of stronger thunderstorms here um, into Tuesday into Thursday here across parts of the central and southern plains, particularly as we get towards, say, the 15th here. So 14th into the 15th. Yeah, we could be looking at some very strong thunderstorms across the southern plains here. And there we go. That's going to race eastward here later on Friday. So stronger thunderstorms reaching parts of the east, the Appalachians here. And look at this snowfall, rain changing to snow here across parts of Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas. West Coast looking much quieter this week, especially mid to late week. And look at that. Yeah, we're going to see those thunderstorms develop later on the 14th here, Thursday into Friday across texas so we could be looking at a pretty big severe weather outbreak dallas san antonio on eastward here so watch this area that's going to race eastward another area takes its place on the 16th that system moves off the east coast and then look at this this is that system right around the 17th we get another surge of moisture up here into the ohio valley into parts of the northeast it doesn't look like snow unless you're in northern new england parts of new brunswick and then we get another system Trying to ride up the coast doesn't make much headway. Here's the 20th into the 21st. High pressure. This is a lot different than the European model that I'm about to show you. As we continue to cruise through time here, high pressure really controlling the east through the 22nd here. Some more of our ending moisture here. And look at this as we continue towards the 24th. Here's an east coast system but it, there's just way too much warm air because there's another system pushing to the northwest northeast here across the western great lake so gfs is favoring more of uh, warmer rainier conditions so here we go with our european model 
Uh, there's this 5 a.m. Monday morning. You can really see the ISO bars quite nicely here on the European high resolution. And you can see that low winding up over parts of New Brunswick. You know the wind is going to be howling here with that pressure gradient, high pressure to the south, and big low pressure bombing over parts of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. That's going to continue the snow continuing here. Lake effect will kind of kick down a notch as we get into uh, Monday. So that's going to set us up, you know, that low moving up towards Newfoundland. Continue. Continuing into the 12th here, uh, Tuesday, so we might have some wraparound snow into parts of New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, so we could be looking at, say, you know, 10, 15, 20 centimeters in some of these areas of snowfall, gotta watch out for that, but then as we head throughout the week here, you see this is that big push we're going to see a big area of low pressure moving to the northeast here drawing lots of moisture severe weather will become a thing here as we continue to go out in time and then look at that that's rolling across the deep south here uh, later on thursday into friday we could be looking at a strong to severe weather outbreak here here is another coastal low trying to kick off but it has very little success here and then we get towards the 17th see this energy diving across the south European model going crazy with severe weather here across parts of the Gulf Coast and eastern Texas. That's going to continue to race eastward here. And watch this as we head towards the 18th, the 19th, into the 20th. This looks like one of those classic storms that barrels right out of the Gulf of Mexico, right over Georgia by this time. This is one of these kind of low pressure systems that can happen here into March. And then look at the trajectory this takes right east of the Appalachians, right off the North Carolina coast, and let's go up here and see if we can see a high pressure. There is a high pressure up here. It's not tremendously strong, but it might be enough if this solution verifies uh, to bring us snowfall in the northeast. And look at how this really starts to bomb here. 984 millibars. Could this be a thing here across parts of the Northeast? Well, this is 10 days out. I really caution you on this, but it is something we will keep an eye on here because if this solution were to hold true, we would actually see, you know, potentially a significant snowstorm on our hands. Our upper air pattern across the east, there's that trough moving out as we head through Monday into Tuesday off of southeast Canada there. A massive firecracker Inferno Ridge takes its place mid to late week here across the east. You can see that. Look at this ridge up here into the Gulf of Alaska really building nicely here. You can see that low pressure here across the desert southwest. And look at this as we head towards next week. More on March 18th, you start to see evidence of a major trough. Of course, the European model really going crazy with this trough, although you know, I'm not too impressed at the moment because it stays positively tilted. If this were to become more negatively tilted, that would be more promising for storm development. So our liquid equivalent precipitation here, wraparound continuing into parts of eastern New England, southeast Canada, here in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Maine. Here it is, the severe weather outbreak here expected across the midsection and the south really starts to get cranking by midweek here. That's going to bring some massive rainfall totals here to the southern states and Gulf Coast on the order of three to six inches. And then here across the Ohio Valley into the northeast, yeah, as we get towards, say, this is right around, let's see, we get towards Friday and the weekend and under early next week as well. We get a surge of moisture up to three inches in some areas. All right, let's get into snowfall totals. Additional snow here southeast of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario in those snow belt areas as we head through Sunday night into early Monday morning. We could be getting another two to five inches locally higher in those snow belts. Also in northern New England, southeast Canada, we could see an additional six to 12 inches. Look at that in northern New Brunswick. Yeah, you could be looking at much more than that. As we head throughout the week, there is not too much to talk about. Exception here is part. Oh, look at this. Yeah, I don't know if I quite buy this, but here it is. It is Wednesday, uh, March 20th here. So European is showing a massive snowstorm here across parts of the northeast. All right, so let's go over to the GFS model. There's that wraparound snow into parts of the northeast. There it is, snow in the four corners, getting into parts of maybe the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle there as we get into, there it is, 16th, 17th time frame. 
Yeah, the GFS is not agreeing with that 20th snowstorm that the European, in fact, it has it going much further north and west has been the rule here in the parts of Canada. So we'll watch for it here, but not jumping on the European bandwagon just yet for the 20th. All right, so additional wraparound moisture with especially the snowfall here in the northeast as we head through early say Monday morning. Yeah, if you look here, let's just take this out just a little bit. There you go. So here into parts of northern New York, the Adirondacks, the white and green mountains up here, parts of Maine, you're going to be looking at the most snowfall accumulations here. The highest peaks, particularly above 2,000 feet here in particular, maybe an additional 6 to 12 plus inches. Now, southeast of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, yeah, Cleveland up to Erie, very little additional accumulation expected, but inland here, northwest Pennsylvania, western New York, that's where we'll see additional snowfall accumulations on the order of three to six inches. So just adding on top, would not be surprised if Cleveland area sees another inch or two overnight uh, Sunday night into Monday morning. All right, we take a look at our HRRR future radar here. As we continue through Sunday evening into Sunday night, we're going to continue to watch that snowfall southeast of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario uh, across parts of the highlands here, uh, northern Appalachians into northern New England and northern New York here. That's going to continue, especially inland. You can see additional accumulations, probably one to three inches, locally higher to three to six inches. And then northern New York, Adirondacks, White Green Mountains into southeast Canada, we could be looking at heavier snows on the order of 6 to 12 inches as we continue through mo early Monday afternoon here. And look at that. That low is pulling towards Halifax. Look at this. Towards Tuesday morning, we could still be dealing with snow here into New Brunswick, eastern Maine, and turning to snow here in Nova Scotia. So that low will be with us for quite a while. As we continue to go in time, the only system this week out west appears to be, you know, early week here. That continuing to funnel moisture into the Pacific Northwest and Northern California, while the east high pressure tries to continue to build in. However, northern and eastern New England into southeast Canada continuing with the snow showers and some cold rain showers as well towards the coast. All right, so as we continue through the rest of your March into April here, there is that big trough right around the 20th. Yeah, could we have an East Coast snowstorm out of that? It's potential, but it's still 10 days out plus. So a lot can change. I do caution you on that. And then look at that as we head through the end of the month. It does look like we get a lot of fast moving systems here into parts of the east. And now that winter is officially becoming over, it looks like the trough that we wanted for snow lovers most of the winter actually becomes kind of a reality here all right so as we take a look at the outlook here this is as we head throughout our second full week of march here it's looking actually above average as temperatures both coasts here and below average in the central states but i caution you because later on in the month come the third and fourth week of march it starts to get colder back east here and warmer conditions prevailing out west and as we get to precipitation outlook this week yeah, second full week of March looking active across the east and the south. Kind of a lull here in the action out on the west coast. And then kind of similar as we get towards the latter part of March here. If we take a look at Canadian winter storm outlook here. Southeast Canada hitting the jackpot here for snowfall totals. Also out west coast of Canada as we head through mid to late week. Look at that continuing and then kind of tapering off. But look at this. Multiple storms in southeast Canada. Even come late week into next weekend, another storm here across parts of central Canada. That's great news for the drought providing you with a little bit of snow here and that blows up into a potential another storm here for southeast Canada towards March 18th. So something we'll have to keep a very close eye on. Um, not showing up here on the GFS, Europeans showing a massive East Coast storm that could affect Southeast Canada as well. But GFS kind of going a little bit uh, more warmer here. Rain into parts of Toronto, Ottawa, up to Quebec City. Snow further north into parts of Quebec towards the 21st of March. And look at that parade of moisture as we continue through the last week of March. Yeah. Could be bringing up some very warm air here and across southeast Canada, so rainfall. And then another storm out here on the west coast of Canada could be bringing more snow to the higher terrain. But look at this, staying very stormy here across eastern Canada as we get through March 26th. Canadian snowfall outlook, it is looking very snowy on both coasts. Look at southeast Canada here. Actually, let's just back that up. So, yeah, 
Eastern Quebec, Northern New Brunswick, Newfoundland, parts of Nova Scotia. Yeah, as we head through next weekend, you could be looking some areas closer to 50 to 60 centimeters of snow here and widespread 20 to 30 centimeters likely. That is pretty intense. Uh, West coast of Canada as well. We're actually going to have come late week here into parts of central Canada as well. We could be picking up close to 20 centimeters of snow here as well. So these are like the snowy areas of Canada as we head through the third week of March. So for my Caribbean friends here, enjoy it before hurricane season here because it's going to stay quiet most of this week. Maybe a few showers towards Jamaica and Hispaniola and Central America towards the 14th into the 15th here. But for the most part, you know, this is just your regular afternoon and evening showers that pop up here on these easterly trade winds. So looking very pleasant here. Bahamas, Yucatan Peninsula, you know, as we head towards next weekend. And look at that. Yeah, things stay pretty quiet for the most part. Just soak up this quietness because I have a feeling this hurricane season is going to be at one for the record books. Now, look at this. A big trough across parts of the eastern Gulf all the way down to the Yucatan. This is towards the 19th into the 20th. So we could be looking at, you know, some problems as we get towards the Bahamas, say the 20th, and then towards the Cayman Islands, Belize, and Honduras. So for our rainfall here across the Caribbean, it looks really dry to start the week out. Maybe some rain here around the Yucatan, Belize area. But yeah, it's not until we get to about Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, around March 19th here. We start to get a little bit of surge of moisture here across Jamaica, parts of southern Hispaniola here. And as we go to the eastern Caribbean, eastern Bahamas, these areas, yeah, as we head throughout mid to late week, we have some showers with some tropical wave action here. Yeah, it could, uh, by the 19th or 20th, pile up close to 60 to 90 millimeters here into the north central parts of the Lesser Antilles, upwards of two, maybe three inches total. Even towards Puerto Rico, we're looking at about 16 to 30 millimeters about an inch or less on average here. Bahamas look pretty dry, especially the Turks and Caicos. I got plenty more weather for you in just a moment, but take a look at my affiliate. Do you want some awesome maps? Check this out. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning, digital, professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. So temperatures this week, a look at this warmth building across the midsection of the country. We are looking very toasty here, even across Florida as well. The cooler air is hiding out across the northeast, but that will be a fading memory as we get our next system pushing across the plains, pushing 60s all the way to the Ohio Valley and to the northeast, 70s all along the deep south here. And look at this, as we get into Wednesday, look at what is going on here. We continue to see this massive warmth even into the mid-60s here across parts of the Northeast and the Ohio Valley. We start to see evidence of a cold front behind this as well, but look at the warmth out ahead of it, spreading eastward for Friday as well as we get that surge all the way up into the Ohio Valley in the Northeast, looking very spring-like as well as next Saturday. Extended outlook from hometown viewers, being into Scranton, Upper Susquehanna River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Monday through Friday here, we are looking at some scattered snow showers in the morning below, uh, basically before 7 a.m. here. Little, if any, accumulation. Very windy, winds gusting over 40 miles an hour at times. 43, but look at this warming trend throughout the week, the mid-60s by Wednesday and Thursday, and a chance of showers on Friday. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. Join me on Facebook at Media Mark, also at Weather Northeastern, also at Hurricane Northeastern, and also at Susquehanna handle weather also twitter at weather eastern and you can visit me at meetingmark.com
Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to check out my winter weather outlook for 2023-24. A link in the description down below as well as my affiliate, Trilogy Map.